In this video, you will learn how to secure Nginx by modifying the Nginx configuration file with these seven settings. I'll also demonstrate what each option does. Now let's get into it. The server tokens directive specifies whether the Nginx web server displays the Nginx version number in the server HTTP response header field. By examining the server header, a hacker can determine the version of the Nginx web server being used. This information can be used to identify known vulnerabilities in that version of Nginx and exploit them. If the server tokens reveal that the server is running an outdated version of Nginx, a hacker could search for known vulnerabilities in that version and launch targeted attacks in an attempt to exploit them. To hide server tokens in Nginx, modify the Nginx configuration file located at slash etc slash Nginx slash Nginx.conf and add the server underscore tokens directive and setting its value to off. The server tokens directive can be set in the Nginx configuration files HTTP, server, or location contexts. But it is more applicable when set in the HTTP context. This will prevent Nginx from including its version number in the server header of its HTTP response. After adding the directive, we need to reload Nginx for the new configuration to take effect. Setting server tokens to off removes the Nginx version number from the server HTTP response header field, and the server header field is simply set to the value Nginx. Now it makes it more difficult for attackers to identify and potentially exploit vulnerabilities in specific Nginx versions. The more underscore clear underscore header server directive is used to completely remove the server header from the response sent by Nginx. By using the more underscore clear underscore header server directive, we can prevent our server information from being included in the response and make it more difficult for attackers to target our server. To use this directive, we need to install Nginx headers module. In Ubuntu, we need to install the following package. Then modify the Nginx configuration file where the server context is located. In this example, the configuration file is slash etc slash Nginx slash sites enabled slash default. The more underscore clear underscore headers directive can only be used in the server context of the Nginx configuration file. After setting the directive, we need to reload Nginx for the new configuration to take effect. Now, going back to the browser. After I refresh the website, the server header does not appear anymore. It's important to keep in mind that while this directive can help to obscure the server information, it is not a substitute for keeping your software up to date and using other security measures. Attackers may still be able to identify the software and version running on your server through other means, such as fingerprinting the server's response to specific requests. The Content Security Policy or CSP header is used to specify a list of trusted sources for various types of content, such as scripts, images, and styles. By setting a CSP, you can help to mitigate cross-site scripting or XSS and other content injection attacks. In Nginx, we can set the content security policy header using the add underscore header directive. This can be set in either HTTP or server block, but I prefer the HTTP block. The default SRC self value specifies that the browser should only load content such as scripts, images, and styles from the same origin as the web page. This helps to prevent cross-site scripting and other content injection attacks. The always flag is used to ensure that the header is added to the response even if the response is an error such as 400 or 500 errors. By default, the add underscore header directive only adds the header to 200 and 300 responses. In other words, with the always flag, the CSP header will be added to any type of response that the server returns, including error pages. This is useful because it ensures that the CSP header is always present, regardless of the type of response. Now we reload Nginx and check the headers from the browser. 
It's important to keep in mind that CSP can have a big impact on the functionality of your website, so it's recommended to test the configuration before deploying it in production. It's also worth noting that the CSP header is not supported by all browsers, so it may not have any effect in some cases. The X-Frame Options HTTP Response header can be used to indicate whether or not a browser should be allowed to render a page in an iframe. This can be used to prevent clickjacking attacks by ensuring that your content is not embedded into other sites. To set the X-Frame Options header in Nginx, we can use the add underscore header directive in the Nginx configuration file HTTP block. In this example, the add underscore header directive is used to add the X-Frame Options header with the value denied to the HTTP response. The always flag is used to ensure that the header is added to the response even if the response is a 400 or 500 error. Now we save and exit, then reload Nginx. We can now reload the browser. As expected, my test website did not render in the iframe at all. We can also check the HTTP headers of the website using browser developer tools. This can be used to protect against clickjacking attacks by ensuring that your site cannot be embedded in another site and presented to the user in a way that disguises its true origin. For the sake of this demo, I'm using an outdated Google Chrome browser. And I created a simple website with HTML code to test the X content type options header. The website code creates an HTML page with a heading, an image, and a script element. In this case, the script file is named script.css. Take note that it has the wrong content type, CSS instead of JS. The script.css is a line of JavaScript code that, when executed, will output the string, this is a malicious script, to the browser's JavaScript console. When we load this HTML page in a browser, it attempts to load the image and the script file that have the wrong content type. If the X content type options header is not set and the script file is served with an incorrect content type, the browser should load the image and execute the script without any errors in the browser's developer console. This behavior, however, can be taken advantage of. For example, if your site allows users to share images, an attacker could upload a specially crafted image file containing JavaScript code. A browser performing content sniffing could then be tricked into executing the malicious file. To prevent content sniffing attack, we need to set the X content type options response header to no sniff. This instructs browsers to avoid guessing response types and instead rely solely on the content type header. To set the X content type options header with the value no sniff, we can add the following line to our Nginx configuration file. This directive can be added to the HTTP, server, or location block of your Nginx configuration file. But for this example, I will add it to the HTTP block. The add underscore header directive is used to add the X content type options header to the HTTP response, and the value no sniff is passed as an argument. The always flag is used to ensure that the header is added to all responses, regardless of the status code. Now save and exit, then restart Nginx. If the X content type options header is set to no sniff, the browser should block the script from loading and show an error message in the browser's developer console. The value of the X content type options header is set to no sniff, which tells the browser not to perform content sniffing. This helps to prevent certain types of cross-site scripting attacks where an attacker might try to upload a file with a different content type header than its actual type in order to execute arbitrary JavaScript code in the browser. XRuntime is a header that can be included in an HTTP response that specifies the amount of time it took for the server to process the request. It can be exploited by attackers in a few ways. But the most noticeable type of attack that used to exploit this header is the timing attack. 
A timing attack is a type of attack where an attacker can use the X runtime header to measure the time it takes for the server to process a request. This information can be used to confirm whether a piece of information, such as a username, is valid or not. The proxy underscore hide underscore header directive is used to configure Nginx to remove the specified HTTP response header field from the response headers of a proxied server before sending the response to the client. The proxy underscore hide underscore header directive can be used in the HTTP server or location context of the Nginx configuration file. In this example, the X runtime header field will be removed from the response headers of the proxy server before the response is sent to the client. Removing this header field can be useful for security purposes, as it can make it more difficult for attackers to gather information about the performance and scalability of the server. In this example, we will remove the X powered by response header information that our server runs on ExpressJS framework. To remove this information, the proxy underscore hide underscore header directive can again be used in the HTTP server or location context of the Nginx configuration file. The X powered by header field will be removed from the response headers of the proxy server before the response is sent to the client. The X powered by header field is used to indicate the technology used to power the server. Removing this header field can be useful for security purposes, as it can make it more difficult for attackers to identify the technology stack in use and potentially exploit vulnerabilities specific to that technology. That's all for now. Drop me your feedback and comments below. If this video helped you in any way, please like share and subscribe. Thank you.